All right, welcome back. We're going to be working on part two of importing data uh, into Excel. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at uh, we're going to be looking more at the uh, uh, import of data from a uh, an Access database table or a query into Excel, um, and we're going to be looking at how to manage the connections, uh, how to refresh data once uh, our source data has been updated. Uh, so first thing I'm going to go ahead and do. Uh, is show where we actually um, can import the data. So if you go to the data tab in your Excel workbook, uh, we're going to click get, get external data and we're going to get that from an access database. Uh, I'm going to go to my source database and select file. So we have a, a list of databases here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull in um, transactions database. So it's going to give me a uh, it's going to give me a, an import data dialog box. It's going to ask me how do I want to view the data in the workbook. So you can create it from the, uh, you can create a table, a pivot report, pivot chart, or you can just create the connection itself. I'm going to go ahead and import this. You can either import it into a new worksheet or an existing worksheet and select your starting location. Um, click OK, and what that's going to do now is we've just imported uh, a database table from um, our Excel. Uh, I'm sorry, our Access database into um, into this uh, workbook here. Uh, and if you scroll down, you'll notice we have a significant amount of well, we've got 50 transactions in here. Uh, so just to kind of get a a snapshot of what information can get uh, get imported in here. If you remember from previous chapters, we're working with uh, an Excel table now. Um, you have the ability to kind of go in and filter, sort, um, and uh, import that data uh, as required. Uh, view that data as you need to. Um, so that's that's uh, quickly how you import uh, data into. Excel from an, from an access database. Uh, one thing I want to show as well is if you go uh, back to your data tab and click on under connections, the connections group, there is a connections dialog. It's going to give you a workbook connections. As we mentioned uh, earlier in the other video, uh, you can maintain a connection from an external source like an access database. Uh, and as your source data changes, um, you, you can actually refresh that information. Um, so uh, in this particular instance here, we have a workbook connection to our E10C2 transactions um, database here. Uh, and you can pull up the properties of this particular information. You can kind of specify um, how uh, you want this refresh control. So a background refresh, again, would be uh, you, you know, would be refreshing it uh, through the application itself. You could specify a time if you're working with a uh, if you're working with a database that uh, gets updated pretty frequently. You can specify a refresh on that. Um, you can also specify refreshing uh, the uh, the data when opening the file. So every time that you open the file, it automatically goes out and grabs that new uh, new data. I'm going to go ahead and leave the, the defaults there. Uh, but one other thing I want to uh, go ahead, and you can actually refresh the information here, but one thing I want to show in particular is this locations where connections are used. If you click on the click here to see where selected connections are used, that link will give you uh, the information in terms of where in your Excel workbook uh, that, that that data um, is, is being used. So I have a sheet that hasn't been named yet, so it's still referencing in a sheet too. I'm just going to give the location of that information. So again, if you're dealing with, uh, and you can deal with multiple uh, data pools, um, you can deal with multiple queries where you're pulling things from various tables, and kind of having it in the main going here, and you may have more off to the right side. Um, so you can kind of view based off of your connection information um, what what uh, rows and columns and what range within itself. That data is being used. Uh, so again, um, to to go ahead and pull in the information from an Excel database to manage that connection, specifying a, uh, a refresh structure, whether it be 
uh, periodically over a course of time, every time you open up the file, um, or again, uh, to go ahead, uh, if our database were to be uh, modified, we have more data coming in here and we want to see, hey, is there any new information? We go ahead and click the refresh all, and it gets the latest data for any new information in there. Uh, so for this particular instance, we don't have any new information that we've entered in there. However, uh, if new data were, were inputted into that database, somebody else going in there and inserting information, we could get visibility uh, of that refresh data uh, for our Excel worksheet. So again, to, to differentiate between importing a static uh, text file, uh, some sort of tab delimited file, fixed width, or a, uh, a comma separated uh, file, uh, your importing of data into um, into an Excel worksheet from a query gives you more flexibility uh, in, in managing the connections and getting more up-to-date information than you would a static text file. Uh, the other uh, impact of that is, again, uh, in, a, in a standard text file, if you manipulate that data in any way, shape, or form in your Excel worksheet, a refresh of that data may, uh, may undo or uh, uh, may not include any of the modifications that you've made since the last re-import. Uh, so again, two different ways to go ahead and import information into Excel. Uh, in the previous video, we focused on a static text file. Uh, in this particular video, uh, here we're focusing more on an access database where you manage the connections and you can get more, uh, more up-to-date current uh, information as it appears in the database. So again, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, please go ahead and email me at lion.free at ppcc.edu.